When we're evaluating arguments, we're looking for ones which are valid. Nobody wants to be fooled by an invalid argument, which doesn't really support the conclusion. And yet we've seen that there are valid arguments which have false conclusions, and there are valid arguments which have false premises. So we want arguments to be valid, yes, but we want them to be more than valid. So consider this argument. All Americans love Coke. Second premise, all people are Americans. Conclusion, therefore, all people love Coke. Now, is this argument valid or not? Yes, it is valid. It's indisputably valid, which is just to say, if one and two were both true, then three would have to be true as well, right? There's just a logical connection between the premises together and the conclusion. If they were true, the conclusion would have to be true. And that's all it means to say that it's valid. But, of course, we all know that it's false that all Americans love Coke. Some love Pepsi, but not Coke. Some don't drink soda. Uh, it's false that all people are Americans. Some people are from China or France, for instance. Um, and it's false that all people love Coke. You probably know somebody that doesn't love Coke. So even though we have falsehood all the way down here, we have a valid argument. Now the point isn't that there's anything wrong with validity. The point is that we want arguments which are also sound. And an argument is sound just in case it is valid and it has all true premises. So that's what a sound argument is. Now, of course, if it's valid and each premise is true, then, of course, the conclusion will be true as well. That's implied by its being valid and it having all true premises. But uh, you can't tell an argument is sound just by looking uh, at the conclusion. Right? You can't tell whether it's sound or not just by looking at the conclusion. Um, here's an argument which has a true conclusion which isn't sound. Premise one. The sky is blue. Premise two. Two plus two is four. And the conclusion, France is in Europe. Now, you don't want to say this argument is sound just because the conclusion is true. Of course, every statement here is true, isn't it? It's true the sky is blue, it's true that 2 plus 2 is 4, and it's true that France is in Europe. But that doesn't mean that the argument's unsound. So, sorry, that not that it's sound, it's unsound. Why? Because it's invalid. Uh, it could be that the sky is blue and that 2 plus 2 is 4, but France be somewhere else. So the conclusion doesn't follow from the premises here. Okay, but let's consider an example of an argument which is sound. So it is valid and has only true premises. Here's an argument like that. Premise 1, no, diamond, no diamonds are emeralds. Premise 2, the Hope Diamond is a diamond. And the conclusion is the Hope Diamond is not an emerald. So is this argument valid? Well, when you look at it carefully, you see that it is valid. If no diamonds are emeralds and the hope diamond is a diamond, then the hope diamond is not an emerald because no, no diamonds are emeralds, right? So that is a valid argument. If one and two are true, then three has to be true. Um, and of course, it's sound as well. 
because not only is it valid, but each premise is true. It's true that no diamonds are emeralds, and it's true that the Hope Diamond is a diamond. I believe that's the biggest diamond in the world. And because of that, the argument is sound. So it's valid, but it's more than valid. It has true premises as well. Here's another argument. Uh, Frank, let's use abbreviation here, is larger than Sam. Second premise, Sam is larger than Bob. And the conclusion, Frank is larger than Bob. Frank's bigger than Sam, Sam's bigger than Bob, therefore Frank is bigger than Bob. And this is obviously a valid argument. And uh, we can suppose that this is true as well. Suppose it's true that Frank is really bigger than Sam. Suppose it's true that Sam is really bigger than Bob. If those are both true, then the argument would be sound as well. Now, of course, whether those premises are true is going to depend on who we're using those names to refer to. When you stick with simple arguments, generally it's pretty obvious whether or not they're valid. It's not always obvious whether a simple argument is sound or not. Okay, so what is the definition of unsound? Well, we don't need a separate definition. An argument is unsound just in case it doesn't meet the conditions for soundness. So there's two ways an argument can fail to be sound. First of all, it could be invalid. So if soundness is validity plus truth of premises, if the argument's not valid, it's, it's therefore not sound. So that's one type of unsound argument. Another type of unsound argument, though, is maybe more interesting. It's valid, but has at least one false premise. So there are valid arguments which are unsound, not because they're invalid, but because they have one or more false premises. So that initial argument that we looked at about Americans and Coke, that one was unsound. Here's one that's a little bit more subtle, perhaps. Uh, all women are married. Second premise, some executives are not married. And the conclusion, therefore, some executives are not women. Now the conclusion here, notice true, but still this is not a good argument. But what is it exactly that's not good about this argument? Is it invalid? No, actually, it is valid, isn't it? Because if each premise were true, then the conclusion would have to be true. If it were true that all women were married, if there were no bachelorettes, and it was true that some executives are not married, and of course it is true, um, then if those two are true, it would follow that some executives are not women. So this argument is valid. It's, its problem is not that it's invalid. It is valid. The problem, of course, is the first premise. So because the first premise is false, that makes the argument unsound. And you shouldn't be persuaded by this argument because uh, it's not a sound argument. It relies on a false assumption.
Okay, let's look at one more argument. Premise one. If a basketball player is nine feet tall, he or she can slam dunk. without jumping. Second premise, Shaq, that is Shaquille O'Neal, is nine feet tall. And then the conclusion, therefore, Shaq can slam dunk without jumping. So is the argument valid or not? You tell me. That's right, it's obviously valid. If each premise were true, then the conclusion would have to be true. But, of course, if you know anything about Shaquille O'Neal, you will know that the argument is not sound because premise two is false. So because premise two is false, he's tall, but he's not nine feet tall, then it is unsound. Now, if you presented this argument to somebody who wasn't a fan of basketball and who had no idea who Shaq was, they wouldn't be able to tell that it was unsound. They would be able to tell it was valid if they understood the concept of validity. But if someone didn't know anything about basketball, they would not realize that this argument was unsound. But it would still be unsound, right? It's not just a matter of opinion that it's unsound. Um, it's an objective, objectively true thing that it's valid, and it's objectively true that premise two is false. Um, okay, so that's another example of an argument which is valid but not sound. And we've also realized that it's not obvious uh, whether an argument in many cases is sound or unsound. Sometimes it'll depend on background knowledge, and as we'll see next time, there can even be arguments that are just beyond us. Uh, only people with certain specialized abilities and qualifications can tell whether they're sound.